Trial Attorney John Fishwick is with us now. He served as the U.S. Attorney for the Western District of Virginia. He's been following this case closely with us. Uh, thank you. Always appreciate your perspective. How concerning is the jury in this case? I mean, they're already indicating that there's a lot of publicity. There will be. Um, not many people envy the spot that they will be in. How does the judge handle this jury? Well, Marty, you're right. It is a challenge. This is probably the most high-profile criminal case in the history of our country. I'm sure the jurors that are now on it and the alternates are feeling that pressure. They're seeing the press. They're seeing all the folks, the attentiveness of the case. But, Marty, my experience in long trials is the jurors get close with each other. They'll, you know, spend time with each other every day in a very stressful situation, and they'll get close to the judge. If they have a question, they'll go to the judge. The juror this morning went to the judge and had some hesitation. But that juror is back on the jury today. There'll be some bumps in the road as they, be they begin, but that's why you have alternate jurors. I fully expect most of these jurors to stay on the case, to not be removed. They'll feel the pressure. There's no question. Uh, they've got a tough duty. That's why so many folks didn't want to be on the jury when they picked the jury. But nonetheless, I expect this jury to stay basically intact. Opening statements will begin here shortly. How important is this moment for the prosecution and the defense to lay the foundation of their argument? Marty, I think opening statements in a criminal case are critical. The prosecution is going to want to say, look, Michael Cohen has credibility problems in a lot of things that he's done. Uh, he's a convicted felon. Uh, they'll have to contend with that. And the way I think they'll contend with that, Marty, they'll say, we have documents to back him up. We have other witnesses who will back him up. In fact, the first witness they're calling, they're going to say, is backing up the conversations that Michael Cohen had with the former president. Former president's legal team is going to say, Michael Cohen is a serial liar. He's lying about everything. He's pled guilty to this. He did this on his own. He's obsessed with the former president. And the prosecution's entire case rises and falls on Michael Cohen, and that you should find the former president not guilty because you shouldn't base a conviction on his testimony. Which of the other witnesses, so you mentioned Michael Cohen, he's considered the star witness for the prosecution. David Pecker will be the first, Stormy Daniels, Karen McDougal, Hope Hicks, among other potential witnesses. Who will be the most unpredictable on the stand? I think front and center is Michael Cohen, Marnie. I mean, the cross-examination of him, I think, will be lengthy and fairly brutal. You know, he's been uh, out in the spotlight. He's said a lot of things about the former president. He's been in court and said a lot of things. He testified before Congress. He's got a long history of testimony that the Trump legal team will say is completely inconsistent with what he's testified in court. Uh, so I think his testimony will be a little unpredictable on the cross-examination. I expect it will get very testy. But I think that'll be the probably the most important part of the case from an evidence standpoint. How does he hold up under cross-examination from the Trump attorneys? Prosecutors have asked John for Trump to be held in contempt over a series of media posts that he's made. The judge will hold a hearing on that tomorrow, we understand. How do you think he'll rule? What factors does he consider in, in such a unique situation? Well, it's like the former president. There's always something unique. We're facing different things than we've seen before. If you retweet something that somebody else has said, is that like you said it? Therefore, are you in violation? He certainly will lecture the former president. He may fine him for some of these things, but the judge has got to be careful here. I think he's got to be patient with the former president and not retaliate against him. I expect there'll be a stern lecture. He may fine him, you know, several thousand dollars on a particular statement that he's made. But I think the judge has got to keep his eye on what's important. Like my dad used to say, keep your eye on the donut, what's important in the case. And that is moving the case forward, having the witnesses be heard, having the lawyers be able to make their arguments and moving the case forward. So the contempt thing is really a sideshow. I hope it becomes less important as the case moves forward. As always, John Fishwick, thank you, sir, for your time. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.